This is Phil Legator. I'm a developer evangelist at Pusher. In this video, we're going to look at subscribing to data within Pusher. So first, we covered connecting in an earlier video, and now we're going to cover subscribing. So here's an overview of Pusher again. We're a hosted service. We deal with scaling and real-time infrastructure for you. Our focus is making it as easy as possible to, to build uh, for developers to add real-time functionality to their web and mobile applications. Live content, activity streams, interactive functionality like chat, um, gaming, collaborative apps. Okay, so we're for this tutorial we're using the Real-Time Web Workshop, which is available at github.com slash pusher slash real-time hyphen web hyphen workshop. It's a jQuery framework-based um, application that we're building. Um, and For the moment, we're just going to do simple messaging. So um, if we jump into the code, um, this was the connection solution. So we're going to close this, and we're going to jump into subscribe. Well, let's have a let's have a quick look at the code as it stands. So as I said, it's a jQuery mobile app. So we're including jQuery and jQuery mobile. We've got various things like data role, um, which is part of the jQuery mobile framework. We're including the pusher script tag. We're um, logging internal JavaScript library events. We're connecting to Pusher. We need to supply an app key. So I've got another clipboard. I'll show you where we got that from. Um, again, it's in here, API access. And there's our key. And we're binding to connection state change events. And then we're updating um, a connection status element by adding and removing classes based on so we remove the previous state of connection and we add a class with a name of the current state. So when it's connected, it has a background color of green and I'll show you what it looks like. So if we jump into start, I haven't saved that page, have I? Uh, so if I save that, jump back there. We're not connecting because we haven't got an app key. So there we go. And we're green because we're connected. Okay, so that's the starting point. So what we want to do now is subscribe. So to receive data from Pusher, you need to subscribe to a channel. Then you need to bind to events on that channel. So it's as simple as we've got a Pusher object. We want to, we want to subscribe to a channel. So we'll do pusher.subscribe. And we'll subscribe to, we're going to do like a, um, a status messages app. So we'll say messages. Then we want to bind to an event on that channel. And we want to be informed whenever there's a new message available. And we'll create a function called handle message. And it receives data which is obviously a message whenever new data is available. The other thing we want is a something to display, so some UI. So what I'll do is I'll create these two messages here. And I'm actually going to cheat a little bit here. Um, I'm going to paste in um, an, an unordered list. It's got an ID of messages. It's got a data role of list view and a class UI list view. So they're jQuery mobile classes and data attributes. So in our handle message function, we want to create a new list item element. And we want to set the text on it to the message value, no, the text value, sorry, of our of the event data that we receive. And then we want to append, actually we'll prepend so it appears at the top. the new list item to the messages element. So it's really simple. It won't look very nice at the minute because we haven't got jQuery UI 
um, attributes on this list item. So um, apparently that's that functionality implemented. Um, so if we reload this, you'll see in the debug console we're actually getting a subscribe event. So we are subscribing to messages. And Pusher is responding with a subscription succeeded event for the channel messages. So we are subscribing. But how do we test whether that functionality is working? So again, if you remember from connecting, we've got a debug console within Pusher, which is really handy for things like that. So if, if I reload, you'll see the various events occurring as the page connects. We connect to Pusher. Um, or we subscribe, but we've also got an event creator. Now in the event creator we can trigger events, which is really handy for um, well when you're building an application. So we know we've got a messages channel, we know we've got a new message event that we're binding to, and we know we've got uh, we know that the event handler for that wants um, an object to be sent to it with a property of text and obviously a value. So over here, only oh, you can't see it, we've got a send button. If I click send, you'll see now over in the application we got a hello from the event creator on the channel messages and we also added that to the UI. If we go over here, I type in again, and I send the event, you'll see that one appears over in the left hand side. So that's a really good way of uh, testing the functionality. One thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to take the code, update the code that we've written to add the UI just so it looks a little bit nicer. I'll, I'll walk through the code that I've added. So what we've got here is we create the list item and we add various attributes, um, class attributes and classes, sorry, for jQuery UI. We add the text again, we hide it, hide the, the list item, we append it and then we make it slide down and appear in. So it just seems it looks a little bit nicer. So if we reload that, read that, reload that page and then we try and send the event, it just looks a little bit nicer. It's not a massive improvement, but it will make a bit of difference. Okay, so we, we know that that functionality is working. Uh, another handy tip is also you can, within the JavaScript console, you can access instances of Pusher that have been created. So that, I know this is the first instance. Go. And then I can access the channel because I know it's called messages. There we go, that channel exists. And I can actually emit events on it. Now I know we've got a new message event, and then I can specify data to send. It's not actually sending data, it's just calling JavaScript functions. And this isn't from the event creator, this is the this console. There we go, and that's appeared as well. So that's actually a really handy way of um, debugging your application. So that's how to subscribe to data. Um, we've shown that you um, subscribe to a channel, you bind to an event, and then you write the code that handles that uh, event being triggered. You'll notice here as well, I've also done, I've made the, the handle message global. For me, I actually like to be able to call the, um, the functions here as well. just as another way of testing. So there we go. Um, okay, so that was uh, subscribing. Um, in the, the next tutorial, I'll show publishing from the server.